wait for a few minutes, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I may forget time, so please. Sorry? <laughs> I may forget time. No, no. So uh, please, stop, actually, please stop me. <laughs> why having this one hour and 15 minutes ah, of okay. time so that yeah, yeah. we are... Uh, uh, I'm more relaxed, relaxed the schedule. Yeah. Schedule is to pack, you know. All right. Yeah. It's a good schedule. Flash, uh, sure, sure. Yeah. This way it's yeah, in the end, it's already a lot of, uh, of work. That mm -hmm. four hours, like. Uh, yeah, yeah. There are anyway that so you know. Four so hours. It's, yeah, five hours a day. Okay, so let's get started with the third lecture of uh, uh, Tonegal. Okay, so uh, yesterday I uh, described how if you're given this type of uh, not necessarily regular set, uh, here's the description the image of this gamma zero, which is just only rectifiable, so you know you don't have mean curvature really, uh, or even bounded first variation if you know what it is. And then uh, I also pointed out the fact that, well, you need to assign some kind of labeling to the domains, and you end up having different flows depending on how you assign these numbers. Right? That's very natural to do. And uh, so I'd show you how to compute the approximate mean curvature vector by uh, doing some kind of convolution, and which also satisfy a very sort of nice natural uh, sort of energy law of sort, you know, that the, the rate of decrease is somehow, uh, is corresponds to the mean curvature square integral, which is, you know, what you should expect for mean curvature flow. And, uh, but also at the same time, I pointed out that this scheme is not good because um, this is always diffeomorphism, so there's no topological change, okay? That's one thing, but also um, uh, there's another aspect that, that is problematic about this approach, is that uh, since you're smoothing, you know, you're do doing this kind of convolutions, and compute the mean curvature vector, you don't really see what is going on in a smaller scale than this, diff, this smoothing. You see, we have this parameter epsilon, which is a, you know, the, the, the scale of the smoothing, and, this, and at the end, you have to take a limit, okay, as epsilon goes to zero, but you, this, this approach does not tell you anything about the smaller scale of epsilon. And there could be some crazy things happening in a smaller scale, and as epsilon goes to zero, this, this may actually uh, uh, cause some serious problem, okay? So to remedy this situation, what I'm going to describe today is you add another step, okay, besides this, uh, this uh, motion by mean curvature, which is, okay, so, uh, so remedy is that um, basically in each time step, You add um, another uh, sort of uh, step, uh, which um, does some kind of um, this is not precise, but local uh, area minimizing. Okay, almost area minimizing. Minimizing uh, by by not diffeomorphism, but by Lipschitz map, which is very important that this is a Lipschitz map. In fact, you will see that. Lipschitz deformation or Lipschitz map. Okay. okay, so now, so instead of working with the setup, um, so now I have to worry a little bit about uh, how this domain changes. So I, I want to be uh, very specific about what uh, this 
this type of situation that we, we are working with. So uh, let me give you a definition, the precise definition of so-called open partition. Okay, so fix this number n, which is the number of uh, these moving domains. Now, uh, script m in my talk uh, for, for today in, in, in this, the, uh, this n, uh, this is ordered. So order is important, n element set. Okay, and um, this is called, uh, let's see, an uh, open partition. Open partition of uh, n element. Okay, if the following is true, so I'm kind of, I want to uh, define some, uh, some, something like that precisely. If, if the following is true, if E1 to En are all open, open and disjoint, and some of them can be empty, okay, some, some, some uh, Ei could be empty set, can be empty, okay? That's important also to notice. They, they don't have to be all no empty. And uh, B is that um, they have a complement which is a finite uh, surface measure. This is finite, okay? So, I mean, the picture I have in mind is that kind of things, okay? That's, I have these two, so in that case it's four open partitions, four, four elements, and the complement has n-dimensional finite measure. And this implies, uh, in particular, well, this, this means that you cannot have any um, interior points, of course, if you have interior points, this is going to infinity. So um, this course, this is the same as the bound, topological boundary of this EI, okay? So this is equal to the sum, the union of the topological boundary of EI, okay? But because you can't have any interior points. Yeah. And the number C is the third one. I ask uh, this set to be um, countary and rectifiable. Okay, so this I want this to be countary rectifiable. Uh, of course, this is a closed set, and uh, also I ask countable and finite measure. Right. So, uh, so the reason I would say open partition, I think, it should be clear. Right. I'm sort of partitioning R n plus one into finite open domains. Yes. Oh, oh, sorry, yeah, first one, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Okay, so this, you know, open partition means Rn plus one is partitioned into n open sets, okay? So that's the situation. And this is the, this is the, the uh, set that I'm going to move, yes? How is order? Order, yeah. I, I, I think order is just, uh, just think casually. I mean, I have this n, n elements which I want, I want to keep track of somehow, the order. You know, some of them become empty set sometimes. And uh, this is the one that I'm going to move in, you know, step by step. Okay, and uh, for shorthand we write, just this is just notation. We write, um, uh, if it's open partition of any element, any element I, I write this as uh, script OPN, okay, just for shorthand. And when I write the boundary of this uh, script M, this, this implies, this, this is the same as, this is the same as the boundary of these open partitions. And also, uh, I, I want to use this notation that this uh, double lines like norm is the uh, house of measure restricted to, to this uh, set, okay? So this is, this is, when I write this, this is a surface measure of the boundary. And that I, I hope it's clear, notation, just for shorthand, okay? All right, and um, now, now I, I want to define um, certain Lipschitz map which preserve this structure, okay, in a natural way. But at the same time, that's what I wanted to do to this type of um, um, set. So 
before, uh, okay, so this is definition 2.3, is that uh, given an open partition of n element, okay, so this is uh, where this m is e1, ei, i from 1 to n, okay, given the uh, open partition, uh, def I define a uh, certain admissible function. So Lipschitz map f from Rn plus 1 to Rn plus 1. So that's, that's a map to uh, from Rn plus 1 to Rn plus 1. Um, this is called um, uh, is called this is M uh, admissible. Okay, so this is what I'm defining. If um, first uh, set, we set we set this E tilde. Okay, so that's pretty E I tilde to be the interior point of um, the image of E I. Okay, so this may look slightly strange, but I will explain why I'm doing this. So uh, from I, from one to N, okay. So I set the image uh, of EI under F and take interior points, and I set this EI to that. And then I ask, I, I require the following. So the requirement is, is that this E1 tilde, EN tilde, these are disjoint, okay? And also B is that the complement of these um, set is included in the image of the boundary, okay? So if these A and B are satisfied, I say that this F is M admissible. So this, this obviously, depend on your open partition, okay? So depending on the open partition, you have this admissible class. Um, now, so I, I'll explain why this is somehow uh, natural ones uh, with an example in a moment, but let me first point out that this the admissible class of uh, Lipschitz map preserves the structure of these open partitions first, okay? So um, now the first lemma, uh, no. Lemma here today is lemma 2.5, is that this above defined um, this E1 tilde to En tilde uh, is again uh, is also in open partition of an element. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's it's very easy to check actually. Let me check this proof. Okay, so uh, what is the open partition of any element? I, I just need to check these three things okay, to be true. Uh, the first, in, first one, this, this is uh, by definition is true because I'm requiring them to be disjoint and their interior points, so obviously open. Okay, so open and disjoint are fine, right? So these are fine. And this number, the second one is, uh, is uh, also uh, not difficult because this boundary you see, I want this to be finite measure, but it's in the image of this boundary. And this is Lipschitz map. And Lipschitz map has this nice property with respect to house of measure that, uh, so this, this is bounded. It's by, because of this inclusion, this is bounded by F of this, now, under the Lipschitz, uh, the, the, under the Lipschitz map, house of measure uh, in, may increase, but at most Lipschitz of f raised by power n. Okay, so this is this is true in general, and by definition, this is finite, right? This is part of, by b, this is finite. So, the fact that this is included in the image of the boundary does give you also finiteness. And the third one, being a rectifiable, is also uh, follows from the fact that, well, well, first of all, yeah, this, this also shows that this set is the same as the union of the boundary because it's finite, 
uh, finite measure, no interior points. Uh. And uh, so this set is included in the image of rectifiable set. Okay? And rectifiable set, well, the image of a Lipschitz map is actually rectifiable <laughs> by definition. You, you can check, this is something that maybe may go out a little bit of exercise, but it is to, it, the, 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 um, it is the image of the Lipschitz map of a uh, country rectifiable set is actually a uh, country rectifiable. And any subset of country very any rectifiable set is country any rectifiable. That, that's something that you, it follows from the definition. So uh, let me leave you as an exercise if you're not so sure. So C follows more or less from, from the definition of the country and countably and rectifiable set. And also this inclusions property C, uh, B, property B. Okay, so that's the end of the proof. All right. So anyway, so this admissible um, Lipschitz uh, function gives you another open partition. Now, why am I defining this um, things now? So. Uh, well, at least it's good that this admissible function gives you another open partitions with you know the same property. Okay, so but why am I doing this? Now let's look at the example. Okay, example. So as I said, I, what I like to do is some kind of topological change to happen. And for example, think about um, this kind of crossing figure where your labeling is say something like this. Okay, so these four. Okay, so this is supposed to be extending to, you know, somewhere. So it's not the end of the line, but somehow extending. Okay, so it, let's look at this. If this happens along the way in the flow, or if you start with this kind of configuration, well, this is not length minimizing because you can actually reduce this length by sort of taking this line instead and st making a straight line like this and something like this. This red line and re, you know, replacing this part by these red things. This, this has le shorter lengths. Okay. Now, I want to have this change from this white line to this red line. What you can do is you can actually um, look at this kind of region. Now, you crush, you crush this part this way to this red line, and then stretch this white part so that it fits into this yellow part. You can do this by Lipschitz map. Okay, so basically, what, what I do is you, I, you, do, you do some kind of crushing. You see, just you know, like, like this. <laughs> I don't know how to express. If you write, if you try to write it with an explicit formula, it's actually quite complicated. But you can imagine, right? <laughs> this this yellow part get mapped this way, just onto this red line, okay, onto this red line, and then, because then this part becomes discontinuous, so you don't want discontinu discontinuous, so, so that this part is appropriately stretched to this direction, okay, this white part, you know, appropriately gets stretched to this way. And note that this map, okay, so you do it for all, all, the, all these sections, and this actually does satisfy uh, these, all these properties somehow. Uh, well, first of all, what is the interior point of the image of E1? Note that the interior image of the image of E1 is going to be this part under this kind of stretching. So, in the end, what you end up having is uh, some picture which look like this. Okay, um, it's kind of hard to draw this, but where this E1 tilde, E2 tilde. Is still not looks like this, and also note that the uh, this image the boundary of this original boundary is mapped to this red line, so uh, this uh, second condition is also satisfied. Note that the boundary, newly created boundary, is included in the image of the you know f of the boundary. Um, the other kinds of things, so, so this is achieved, 
The other kind of uh, situation is that suppose you have a little piece of curve, say, within E1. Okay? It, there's no other phase around. Suppose there's nothing else but just E1 surrounding this, this piece of curve with endpoints, say, here. Yeah? Suppose this is a situation. Now, if that's the case, uh, what I would like to do, and also maybe there might be some little things, little things like this, which you really want to get rid of somehow. Okay? Because these are something which within E1, sort of frivolous kind of interface, right? Which, which, which shouldn't be here, really, in the first place. So to get rid of this, what you can do is you can actually, well, there are many ways to do it, but well, one thing is you can kind of stretch this part and then kind of cover this part. Okay, so that's, so again, this is very hard, I think, <laughs> to write down the this formula. But you can kind of stretch this part, cover this part, then this will be part of the interior point of the image of this E1. Okay, so if you do this covering, okay, so stretch this and then cover, and maybe here also, stretch this part and then cover this part. Okay, you can do this if you like, however you like. And you can actually remove this to empty set, right? So any kind of interior, I, I don't know if it's the right word, but interior boundary can be removed. Uh, if, if you allow this kind of definition. And that, so now, this phrase is not totally convincing that this should be the right definition, but if you think about it, there aren't that many choices that you, you can actually make about this type of uh, map. Um, actually, it, it took some time to realize this is the right uh, assumptions for the sort of things we'd like to do. Okay? But it seems like that, that's, I mean, taking it there, it seems kind of strange, but it seems like this is the only way uh, which pr preserves this kind of open partitioning property, but at the same time allow, allowing us to do what we want to do. To, remove things, okay, to remove reverse sets. Okay, um, so this is, uh, okay, so this cannot be actually C1, for example, because this type of, this is something called retraction, usually, uh, but this kind of retraction cannot be C1, it has to be Lipschitz, okay. So, um, now, I define this uh, Lipschitz deformation which is, uh, I'm going to actually use it to minimize the area now. Now, but to, to do minimization, uh, somehow, um, oh, yeah, before I do that, I probably just give a definition. Definition of 2.4 is um, uh, for M admissible function, admissible uh, F, uh, and then uh, we just write this map of um, M to be this, this one that we created, okay? So, so uh, it, given this open partition and given admissible function, the one that I created there, I just d denote this as a sort of a map under this Lipschitz deformation. It's hard to describe, it's, it's not really, a, it's kind of topological map of sort, but I don't know how to you know, describe it. But, uh, so anyway, uh, we know that now this is open partition of any element, an element, yeah, by uh, lemma 2.5. Okay, so that's just an audition I, I created, I'm sorry. I don't know, I could think of any other good ones. Okay, so. Um, now, now, so next things I'd like to do is using this kind of admissible de de uh, deformation uh, de map, I want to somehow localize um, minimization. So um, let me go through this definition, which is a little bit um, slightly uh, like a page or one page things. But uh, now for J, uh, which is going to infinity eventually at the end, we define the following uh, test function, class of test function, called the uh, script AJ. This is the um, uh, C2 function. 
such that uh, it's ne it, it is positive value, but less than equal to one. Okay. This is positive, but um, the other condition is that, uh, let's see, so number phi of x, this is probably looks kind of strange also, is bounded by j times uh, function itself, and the second derivative of phi is also bounded by uh, j times phi of x itself. Okay, this is pointwise everywhere on Rn plus one. Okay, so this may look kind of strange. I mean, the, the gradient and second derivative, uh, the first derivative and second derivative is bounded times some huge number. J, J is going to be a big number. Okay, just, just uh, don't think that's a small number, but it's going to be some number which is going to infinity. But uh, that's, that's the one that, that is pointwise bounded by the functions itself. And I notice that, um, so uh, now, uh, well, this, this class of test function which uh, is um, as j goes to infinity, in some sense, um, as go j goes to infinity, converges to, I mean, in a very weak, weird, uniform uh, norm to a function with uh, phi bigger than equal to 1. Okay, because um, when, uh, so, <laughs> You see, uh, yeah, okay, maybe I should write before, uh, okay, so maybe I should explain this later. So, uh, uh, by definition, this, uh, this test function satisfies this uh, rather trivial uh, inequality. For phi in this class, script AJ, uh, phi of x is less than or equal to phi of y of exponential function of j times x minus y. Okay? This is true for any x and y. Okay, so let me, uh, first, I ex I, before I explain why I'm talking about this, uh, I'd like to show this one. I think it's, uh, so this one's uh, just by uh, one line proof, nothing hard. Uh, this is a proof is because uh, if you look at log of phi and the derivative, this is phi of number of phi, which is bounded by definition by j, okay? So uh, integrating this gives you this, it's easy. Now, this estimate tells you the following. So, um, this is, um, okay, now, this tells you the character of this function is that, um, now, if you're looking at the x and y with the distance being, let's say, less than one over j squared, okay? So, small distance. Then, uh, this number is going to be very, very small very close to zero. That means, you know, this exponential function is close to one. So that means phi of x and phi of y is sort of compatible value, right? That's fine, easy, yeah? So the distance, if distance is very close, say one over j square, then phi behaves more or less like a constant, okay? So if x and y is like that, then phi is compatible, phi is like constant. So this is a class of test function where, you know, if you look at the sort of not so small scale, this behaves not with, with not so much restriction. But once you get down to the size of about one over j square, it behaves more like constant. So this introduces some uh, length scale here, which I, I'm going to utilize, okay, in a, in a moment. So. In some sense, this is a class of, uh, and also I, I should, yeah, also, okay, going back to this, um, uh, any C2 function 
can be almost in this class uh, as long as J is very large, because whenever you're given any function here, okay, here, then I, you just add a little number here, positive number, okay, which is, well, almost phi, <laughs> by adding some little number. And as long as you choose J huge, this guy is going to be a script AJ, okay? By, by, because this delta uh, will bound this from below, after all. So uh, any C2 function you, you, for, for J huge, as long as J is large enough, this guy is in, in this class. So, um, well, given this any C2 functions, which can be, which can be zero, yeah? In, in note that, of course, this implies that uh, phi cannot be zero anywhere, right? If, 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 if it's zero at some point, then it has to be identical to zero, right? So it has to be always positive, but uh, any function which is in this class and e equal to zero, uh, as long as you add a little number, will be in this class, okay? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm as assuming that, yeah. Second derivative. Yeah, yeah, I guess so, yeah. Okay, sorry, yeah, maybe I should, uh, here. Well, here, no, no uh, bounds, but uh, I guess uh, somehow, yeah, given a, a function whose norm is bounded in C2, Maybe that's what I should say, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, now, so that's fine so far. Um, now I want to restrict my uh, map, deformation map, Ipsis deformation back to the following. So for uh, given open partition, okay, given open partition of an element, I define this, this specific class of Lipschitz map, f of mj, okay, to be the, um, uh, maybe two, two is needed. Let f, capital F of script mj be a set of, uh, set of all, all, um, these admissible class of functions okay set of all um, M admissible function uh, admissible function F such that with this following property such that um, uh, there are three kinds. A is that F does not move much. Okay, so I want this to be less than this. This the deformation is somehow stays small within this length scale of one over j square. So it does only a little bit of change. Okay, and the B is that um, <clears throat> I want this to be um, uh, writing uh, this. Uh, let's see, f star of m, that's, that's the one that you get uh, by this uh, Lipschitz deformation. Writing this, we want, we require the, uh, the change of the volume of each element is small. Let's say, this is not so important, but let's say 1 over j, okay? So this, this change of Lipschitz deformation changes only the volume, a very tiny amount. I ask them to be so, okay? And the third is the most important one. Third is that for any test function, phi, in this script AJ, I want this um, integration with respect to this new surface measure to be decreasing, okay, f star of m, okay, is less than or equal to um, phi of the um, d of the one that you moved before. You, you, you. Okay, so this this is something. So I will ask these three things. So it seems like a lot, lot, but it's not so much. But first one, 
ASCQ, as I said, moves only a little bit. Okay, you allow F to be a little bit tiny, tiny change. I ask the second one is just saying that uh, after this map, I want the volume to be only a little bit different. Okay, so I, I want this open the partition is moved a little bit. Yeah, and the third one is the most important. It says that for any test function in this class, the surface measure, if you integrate this test function, is decreasing. Okay, that's so. This is. Uh, is really an uh, important property. And the remark is that, um, remark is, note that uh, this, this uh, class is, uh, let's see, oh, sorry, uh, yeah, no, the remark is, um, let's see. Yeah, by the way, phi is, uh, this script AJ always contains, script AJ always contains contains phi is identically equal to one, okay? That's easy to check, I mean, uh, constant function one is obviously going to satisfy all the conditions here, right? And just derivative zero, right? So that's satisfied. So this function phi equal to one is in this class. So if, if, if this, um, if f is uh, in this class, uh, with one, this has to be satisfied. So you know, phi equal to one, uh, this has to be such that, that means really that it has to be area as decreasing map. Okay. Uh, this is less than equal to um, this, okay? So at least this has to be area minimizing map, but it's not only that, but with respect to the, any test function in this class, I want this to be decreasing. Now, uh, what is the consequence we get f from this? Okay. Uh, maybe I should also point out that uh, this uh, class always, F always contains the identity map, uh, identity map in, from Rn plus R. So that is, uh, Fine, because uh, identity map, of course, this is always equal, and this is zero, and uh, this is zero, of course. Okay, so the identity map is always in this class. So it's, this guy is not empty set always. It, it at least contains identity map, right? Okay, now, this is actually a um, very interesting class of uh, uh, function. Okay, so, so that's, this is really uh, localizing the minim minimizing uh, uh, the procedure. Let me explain what this means. The point is, um, this class of um, function, okay, let's see, what do I do? Yeah, so the, uh, the other remark is that this map F, okay, this guy for large J, in fact, uh, and also, uh, in, in case this is just a smooth, say, you know, if it's smooth, this is smooth, focus on C2, or it's easy enough, but suppose that you have just a, say, you know, ball, for example, just an extremely simple situation, E1 and E2, okay? Suppose it, this is a, what you have here. Now, what is going to be this class? I claim, that for, for large j, this f has to be identity map. Okay? You cannot move, in fact, this, this smooth set. Well, the reason is the following. Okay, so if, if you try to move this, well, it has to be decreasing the area, or length in this case, sorry, maybe I should say length. It has to be decreasing the length, so maybe, okay, well, why don't we just move a little bit, like this. Okay, maybe let's try to move this way by, by this function. But what you can do is you can actually cook up some phi, which, for example, um, is, is one, uh, let's say, one half on this circle. Okay, on the circle. And uh, let's say um, uh, one half plus um, sort of sine to distance function. Okay, maybe I should write this as 
uh, distance function, maybe um, just a distance function from x to um, distance x to this circle, okay? With the positive sign in this, way, in this side and minus sign on this side, okay? So it's more like a you know, cone-like function. Takes value one half, and maybe I have to do truncation away from the circle, but it doesn't matter very much. But now with this, note that if you move this, um, it's easy to see that you know, the integration, you can arrange it so that it's going to increase. Note that uh, if j is large enough, uh, you can arrange it so that this phi is bounded by some j of phi with, for this kind of function, and the second derivative also, too. Well, that's very easy, actually, for, for uh, this can be arranged, OK? Um, achieved. I mean, after all, this is sort of bounded function. So if j is large enough, and also we, the value of phi is like one half around this circle. so. Um, this can be achieved easily. And so if you try to even move a, even a tiny little bit, actually you can get a contradiction to the property C. Okay? So the point is, this class of function, if you're around the area of the smooth part, you, it doesn't move at all. Because if it does, you can cook up some test function such that the property C is going to be violated. Okay? So the point is, only place where you can move is actually around the singular point. Okay, so think about this situation as I wrote before here. So suppose this, this scale, this, the size of this ball is say of the order one over j cubed. Okay. Suppose that's the case. Okay, so this looks not so small, but suppose this is one over j to the cube, right? And then what you can do is you can actually do this kind of you know, length shortening that I described before. Now, this phi now cannot detect the motion, basically. And you only see that the length is decreased. You see, the reason why you could do this is because, you see, if this ball is of the size of like 1 over j to the, j to the uh, cube, then I couldn't, I couldn't do this because then this property is going, not going to be you know, satisfied. The grain has to be fairly large if you this, the size of this ball is this small. So this, this cannot be arranged. But if this is of the order one, then it's easy to do it, this one. But with this, uh, if I do this kind of deformation by Lipschitz map, then uh, you see that the length is uh, decreased. And uh, any function phi, well, only see the decrease of the length. Cannot detect, you know, the, uh, so, <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's hard to describe, but as long as it's small size, and as long as you can uh, decrease the length by a certain factor, say in this case, say you can decrease the length by say 0 0.8 or something, okay? As long as you can decrease the length by a certain factor, um, then you can actually, the, 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 the map can move somehow. So, so what I said here is a remark is, okay, so if f is in this class um, for j large, f is not identity only around uh, uh, known, well, around singularity, where you can reduce the length or measure, and you can reduce reduce the um, measure by a certain factor. In fact, that then you, you you can be sure you can move. Okay, so uh, you can reduce uh, H N measure by some factor. So if you can, yeah, it's like 0 0.8 or so. Okay, so uh, this is a great, uh, because you see this is a map that actually only look, yeah. So can you, can you move the mm -hmm. and, and you can I 
Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, well, actually, if, as long as the curvature is, okay, so if you have a piece of C2 surface where the curvature is, I think, um, less than J square or something, yeah, then you know it doesn't move. Yeah. It has to do with curvature. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also there's a, uh, okay, yeah. I, maybe, I, yeah, I, that's, that's good. That's, I think, yeah, fine. Okay, so um, now let, let me finally define the, uh, this quantity for open partition uh, of an element, um, and the J is integer. We define this following pro number. Define uh, delta J, so this is a notation that comes from the brackets book, but I'm just using the same thing. This is the infimum of um, this, uh, among the, all the class of function within this class, looking at how much you, you could decrease uh, the length or measure. This minus um, Hn of M. This is clear. Okay, so this is the class I talked about. You know, this uh, measure, measure reducing map. I'm looking at the infimum. So, you know, this is how much you could reduce the measure among this, using this Lipschitz deformation. And since we always have this identity in, in here, this number is always less than or equal to zero. Okay? Because identity, you know, map is in this class, as I told you there. Uh, then in that case, it's zero. So, but you can do probably better, right? You can reduce the measure, just like the one I just described there. Yeah? So this is a measurement of how much you can reduce measure within the scale of 1 over j squared, basically. Because you, this map is allowed to move only 1 over j squared. So it totally localizes this deformation around the singular points. Now, okay, so let's see. Because uh, you see, this contains identity map. Okay, so if your identity map, it's, it's it, it, this, uh, the same, and it's zero, right? Uh, do, do you see why you have identity map? This class, I, I told you this. Here. Yeah, this always contains identity map. And if you Plug in identity map, it's, it's the same set, right? After all, so it's, it's, it's zero. But you can perhaps do better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, now we have everything we need to construct a c this discrete approximate flow. Right. Let's see. So that's the, pro so the, the revised, revised construction. Okay. So the first one was uh, not good, but device construction is the following. So now we just start, of course, with the initial data. So let M0 to be our initial partition. Okay, so that's, that's a given partition for, you know, at t equal to zero, right? Now we start from this. And we, we keep, we, and also note that this is open partition of an element by definition. Okay, uh, that I chose this to be so, this way. Now, uh, for, for each j, which typically goes, uh, which at the end goes to infinity, okay, so for each j, um, uh, now set this epsilon j which is going to be the um, scale of the modification that we saw yesterday. So let's set epsilon j to be, um, well, it's actually, um, doesn't matter the precise, precise number, but I'll explain the, the relationship between this uh, scale. And also delta tj, which is a time step, to be, uh, again, this is, I think it's, it's out from my pa uh, paper, but. I, I just need to choose it to be 
I mean, small enough and turn out to be like something like this. Okay, so it, please don't, do not bother by this number <laughs> too much. Okay, it's not so important. Okay, now I choose the scale of the smoothing of mean curvature vector, you know, we, we saw yesterday, to be somewhat much smaller. You see, uh, this 1 over j square is the size of this Lipschitz definition, how much you can move by this Lipschitz definition. And this smoothing is, I want this to be much smaller than how, how, how much you move by this Lipschitz definition. Uh, yet, I want it to be much, much smaller, this time step to be much, much smaller again compared to this, this smoothing parameter. Okay, so there's three kinds of length scales of sort. Okay, so this is much smaller. This is smoothing. This is Lipschitz deformation part. Okay, so there are three kinds. All right, let's see. Um, and then I do basically uh, inductive construction as follows. So let's see. So the first one is that. And so, so inductive, so suppose that we have up to k step, uh, we have open partition, uh, or up, up to k step, delta tj is given, okay? So it's up to k step is done. Now, uh, so you can think this to be initial time, if you like, but I'm just doing this uh, formally that as an inductive step. Right, so this you can think this t equal to zero if you like. Now the next thing is what I do is I choose this Lipschitz deformation, choose f, let's see, uh, tilde of j k because it's k step out from this Lipschitz um, map. Okay, okay, such that. This f almost minimizes the uh, that Lipschitz deformation. Okay, so such that uh, this measure under this map it's a bit long, but t j under this map minus uh, this previous step one. is uh, almost achieving the minimum, but this minimization problem, you don't know if there exists a minimizer, so I just choose something which is very close to minimum, or infimum value, okay? Okay, I uh, note that, you see, that, that the definition of this guy is there. This is the infimum value, so you know, you multiply some little number which is less than one, then you can actually have some map having this property by the property of infimum, right, of course. That's, that's by definition of infimum. You have, you, you have such, such map, okay? If this is zero, you have identity map. But, you know, if you can do it better, you, you have some kind of non-trivial uh, Lipschitz deformation, okay? So you choose this guy, right? Now, after the, doing that, oh, by the way, I think I may put also number to this. This is 12, okay, equation 12. Right, okay, let's see. All right. Now, uh, And then what you do is you move by this Lipschitz map. Okay, so um, let under this Lipschitz map, I, ch I let m tilde of j of k of delta tj to be this um, uh, map, uh, mapped one, mj of the previous step. Okay, which I know is open partition of n element by 
by uh, lemma 2.5. Okay, so I, I chose this Lipschitz deformation, I move it, I call it the, as m tilde j k t j delta t, t j, right? And then after doing this, now I compute the mean curvature. Okay, compute uh, this. Uh, the next one is this. Um, you see the one that I, I defined yesterday. Uh, this approximate mean curvature vector. This is x plus delta tj times this approximate mean curvature. If shown j, um, this for this one, okay, of x. Okay, after doing this difference definition, you compute this approximate mean curvature vector, which I, I defined yesterday. Okay, I hope that this is clear. Maybe I put number 13. Now, finally, I define the next step guy. Define this script J of ne the, the K plus 1 delta Tj to be the image of under this Lipschitz. Uh, sorry, under this uh, motion by mean curvature, approximate mean curvature. I hope that's clear, yeah? This, by the way, this, this Lipschitz map is a diffeomorphism, okay? So no topologically difficult things happen. So uh, it's just a mapping of open partition to, to by, you know, moving this open partition by this smooth vector field, a little bit, okay? Okay, so uh, now uh, we, now, so you, you have these two step things for each time step, and then, you know, after this, you repeat this. You know, as, as many as as many times as you want, basically. Now, combining um, these two, combine uh, tw eleven and twelve, which is the estimate we had, we obtain the following. We obtain the uh, following motion, uh, sort of energy energy law of sort. You see, uh, by this Lipschitz deformation, I'm sorry, by this motion by smooth mean curvature, yesterday we had this uh, estimate that uh, this, this one, let's see, k plus one, this, this next one, you see, uh, this is less than equal to, uh, that's the estimate we had yesterday, is j squared delta tj times uh, n, uh, yeah, I guess I, I had this for the first step, but for, for later step, that's the same. So k delta tj and minus delta tj and uh, h tilde. <laughs> this is a bit long, sorry. But, uh, j k delta tj square by epsilon j h n. And uh, let's see, so the j uh, k delta t j plus epsilon j dx. So that, that's the um, that's an estimate that comes from the motion by the smooth mean curvature vector, the one that we, we had yesterday. I, I hope this is not so bad, right? Now note that this one. You can, you see, this is, a, this is the uh, M tilde J K delta T J, right, by definition. Okay. Uh, this is the one that you move by this Lipschitz definition. And this is bounded by, about, by this plus this, okay. So I, I use this one, which is 12, and then so you get, this is less than or equal to uh, one plus epsilon J squared delta T J. Now I replace it by the next step one, Hn of Mj 
k delta tj. And uh, the same, OK, maybe I just, OK, well, maybe I should write the same, say, OK, maybe I, I don't want to write the same whole thing again. So let's say this, this guy, let's say, uh, Stein's not good. OK, so this one. And OK, so this, this one. Right. This, I, I, I don't want to write the whole thing again. So this I'm writing like this. But in addition, you have this extra term. Here's 1 minus j to the, uh, f to the minus 5 delta, um, delta j of this um, m uh, j k of delta tj. OK. okay. So the, the measure of the next step one is bounded by basically the previous step measure with a little bit of error. And this minus term, this minus of mean curvature square, basically. And this is also negative. Note that this is negative, as I said. Yeah. OK, so if you move this on the other side, on this guy, negative side, uh, this plus this square term plus the, the absolute value of this is bounded by the one, the, by the previous one, measure. Yeah? So you have some kind of energy law here. That is, the decrease is decrease plus mean curvature square plus the absolute value of how much you can reduce by Lipschitz deformation is bounded by the measure of the previous step. Okay? So you can kind of repeat this, get the estimate. Okay, and also I may, may, so at the end, actually I have to do a bit more things. I, I need to, uh, so to close this uh, inductive step, I, I want to replace this guy, um, I want to replace this by the, the one coming from the previous one, uh, sorry, next one. Okay, so maybe I just, just as a remark. I want to replace it by this because um, I don't want to really deal with this guy anymore, in fact. So I, I want to replace it by this, this one, OK? Replace it here, uh, here by this one. But this can be done with very tiny error, because the, most, the difference between this and this is extremely small. You see this, this motion, this one, here's something that's extremely small. And after all, you're multiplying by something extremely small. So the error ends up being very, very small. Okay, so you can actually replace it. You have to do es estimates for here, but anyway, so this can be replaced by, by the uh, next step um, open partition. Okay, so that, that's some sort of comment. Okay, so this uh, at the end gives you the, uh, what we need. Okay, so this is exactly the way we construct the solutions in, in a paper, in fact. Okay, so now, now, at the end, uh, right, so I think uh, kind of running out of time. So now I, I, so this is discreetly defined. So obviously you want to continuous family. Uh, so I just define mj of uh, this as k of delta tj for uh, obvious kind of uh, uh, piecewise uh, constant. I, I just uh, define like that. K plus one delta T J. Okay, so I, I just piecewise, you know, constantly extend it to all time. Now, um, and also uh, adding this from all the way, adding um, this uh, fourteen from uh, K equal to zero to say uh, S equal to uh, K times delta T J. Okay, so just adding this one, one by one, summing over all, all of them, and writing in, so everything can be written as, as in the form of uh, integration, even though it's a discrete things. If I write it in a sort of a suitable integral uh, sense, what you end up getting is the following. So uh, this is less than equal to hn of the initial open partition plus one over delta tj, um, maybe I should go this way. Right. So you get 
that and some negative term also. Uh, plus 1 over delta Tj integral from 0 to s of this quantity of how much you can reduce. Um, let's see, T dt and a minus of 0 to s dt of this approximate mean curvature L2. It square plus j dx. Number 15. Okay. This is what you get at the end after summation. Okay. So this is L to mean curvature with minus sign on the right hand side. This is all, notice that this is also negative. Negative. Okay. Negative or less than equal to zero. Okay, so you can put this on the left hand side, you get the estimate. All right, let's see. So that's uh, construction. OK, so this is um, the energy estimate. But actually, uh, in, in what you have to do is, at the end, you have to, well, OK, so now you have to take a limit. But in the limit, you have to show that the motion is a mean curvature flow. And to do that, you need to know more about the uh, measure. And in fact, we need to realize, uh, we need to analyze also to analyze not only this type of things, but also we need to analyze how the measure changes under the uh, kind of things we did. Okay, so we need to estimate, we need to analyze this. You see, we only analyze the case where, where phi is equal to 1, basically. Okay? We did it for one case, phi equal to 1 case. But in fact, what we have to do is we have to do for all test functions. The same kind of analysis. So this you have to do for all test functions, but in this script AJ, okay? In this class. Now note that this function behave more or less like constant, as I told you, over the scale of one over j square. Now smoothing is much much smaller than that size, so you can actually do almost like what you do for just a non smoothed out case. Somehow, I, I, it's hard to explain this, but you can actually get the expected kind of estimate for, for this function as well. Huh? But I should point out one somehow, somehow remarkable thing is that um, is doing this estimate, in fact, uh, the fact that this, I, I haven't told you about this, but this being like a Gaussian is actually very important. In the sense that somehow along the way to do the estimate of this type, uh, you need to use the fact that number of phi is minus um, epsilon over x of phi plus error, small error. This this uh, identity somehow uh, comes up uh, when I do the uh, estimate somehow, and that, that's why I, was, I told you yesterday that this modifier being. Uh, uh, um, Modify being a Gaussian is somewhat important. And uh, this I don't really see uh, clearly, uh, even though maybe there is some indication uh, from, I, I was talking to Francesco yesterday about some, say, uh, original definition of a finite, set of finite parameter by Di Giorgi, for example. I, I, I presumably have some, <laughs> I haven't checked this at all, but uh, so uh, I don't know. I, I'd like to look into this. Now, uh, so, Lastly, um, in taking the limit, there's also still a challenge, actually. It's not just taking a limit and then that's it. You, you do have to work really hard, actually, to, uh, to, uh, after this, even. So uh, I, I just want to point out uh, the thing is um, you can actually take a subsequence, subsequence, there exists a subsequence uh, uh, such that uh, for all t, uh, this, this measure, this measure, I, I just write the same uh, notation for, I mean, this is supposed to be subsequence. 
uh, converges to uh, some measure. Okay? That this, uh, this can be done uh, because there is some sort of same decreasing property about this measure, which I, I don't want to talk about. But anyways, the, 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 you do have uh, some measure in the limit as j goes to infinity for all t subsequently. Okay. Now, the challenge is to show that this is actually integral. Okay, so that is, you see, this is just a measure converging to measure. And actually, the, the limit of measure could be anything, really. I mean, it could be Lubeck measure, if you even, if, you know. In worst case, it could be like completely spread out measure all over Rn plus 1 and with no sort of hypersurface-like behavior at all. That's possible. But something, the challenge is to show that this is integral, okay? So n integral. And doing this is, a, is a, some serious work. And let me write this as a theorem, because this is somewhat in, independent uh, from uh, the, uh, this analysis, is that well, suppose we have a um, um, finite measure bound, uh, Rn plus 1. Let's see, you have a sequence of this open partition, and suppose this is, as a measure, is converging to some Radon measure, okay? Now, what we have is that, not because of this energy bound, for almost all time, we know that this quantity is somewhat bounded. Because, you know, this, this is like energy estimate, so this guy is, this is bounded, but also this is bounded almost for almost all time. So mean curvature L2 is somehow bounded, even though it's approximate mean curvature vector. And this is, you notice that this is a quantity that tells you, you know, how much you are minimizing, but dividing by this extremely small number. So that means if you have a, and almost all time, this guy divided by this is uniformly bounded, it means your, your sequence is really minimizing in a small scale. So in this theorem too, the assumption you can make is the following. So I, I can look at the sequence where this quantity is, uh, that doesn't go to minus infinity. I mean, notice that this is negative quantity. So this is staying um, uh, away from minus infinity and also lim inf of the, uh, this approximate mean curvature is uh, also bounded, okay? Under these two, uh, under these assumptions, uh, you can actually show that this limit is, has to be integral. Oh. Then, um, then this mu is n integral. That's the conclusion, okay? And uh, because of that estimate, for almost all time, you can actually choose the sequence such that these are satisfied. And this being satisfied means it's like really minimizing in a small scale, and L2 mean coverage are even though its approximate sense is bounded. Note that, you see, the, the control of this quantity is not good enough because, you see, this is smoothed out quantity. So you don't really see anything smaller than epsilon, epsilon j, right? So you don't know what's happening in a small scale, but that is compensated by the fact that it is minimizing a small scale. Okay. And or combine these two, you can get this integrality. So this mu is like a surface measure, with integer multiplicity. Okay. And this part, well, you see, if you know about GMT, this is like um, a compactness theorem of integral variefold um, with the a, with a, with a first variation bound. You know, the difference is here, you don't really have the first variation bound, but approximate mean coverage bound. Right? That's compensated by this. Okay. So uh, there's some hard work you have to do, working in this sort of smaller scale, Make sure that things look like a sheeted, sheeted um, situation, okay, with no hole, and that kind of thing has to be done. And th this is, I, I feel, it's important, interesting. Okay, so I, I just to finish up, up this part today, there are many open questions you can ask 
Uh, one is, say, uh, existence of, uh, well, big thing is unit density flow. This only produces the uh, integral variable, but may, there may be some um, higher multiplicity. And also uh, analysis of tangent flow, which is like a tangent conform mineral surface. For this, you have also something called tangent flow. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, in one D case, we are making some progress in this direction. And the other interesting uh, direction is somehow I feel is that uh, the uh, use for this flow uh, in the analysis of a singular minimal hypersurface. So given a singular hyper, minimal hypersurface, or, uh, then um, there's a, so you, you know, after all you can flow, and given any set you can basically flow by this flow. There's a possibility that some singular minimal surface may flow or, or move and some single minimal hypersurface may not move at all, okay? There's possibility of these two kinds, and uh, you can probably talk about the stability, dynamical stability of minimal surface. That's another possibility. Yeah, and so many interesting questions, okay? Thank you very much for your attention. Okay.